Hello everyone and welcome to my next Let's Play, Curse of Blackmore Manor. Um, I think this is my probably my third favorite Nancy Drew game of all time. Um, definitely up there. Um, with Secret Shadow Ranch and Last Train to Blue Moon Canyon. So, without further ado. Welcome to my latest case, the Curse of Blackmore Manor. To start, choose junior or senior detective. If you're new to adventure games or need some help, choose gameplay overview. No, I'll stick to junior. Dear Ned, greetings from jolly old England. Although right now I'm not so sure about the jolly part. That's because I'm on my way to Blackmore Manor, where the daughter of one of our neighbors is living. The daughter, whose name is Linda, recently married Hugh Pendleton, a British diplomat. Hugh travels a lot, so the only people at the manor with Linda are Hugh's aunt, Mrs. Drake, and Hugh's 12-year-old daughter, Jane. The thing is, ever since Linda moved into the manor, her health has gone downhill. She's oh, practically no. bedridden, and no one seems to know why. Her mother is convinced something is terribly wrong and wants me to find out what. So here I am, about to be dropped off at a huge centuries-old mansion in the middle of a dark, foggy moor. <laughs> I can't tell whether the butterflies in my stomach are because I'm excited or just a tad creeped out. Talk to you soon. I hope. Nancy. Night, Mish, and good luck. Spooky, all right. What the frick? Ah! Oh my, what is that? There's something out there! Where, child? Over there! I mean, something was out there. Uh, come in! I'm Mrs. Drake. I take it you are Nancy Drew? Yes, and I really did see something, Mrs. Drake. I heard something, too. Oh, people are always seeing and hearing things on the moor at night, especially you Americans. Why don't you just go on up to your room? It's the one with the moon on the door. I'd like to see Linda, if I could. I'm afraid Linda is, uh, not quite ready to meet with you just now. But please, come see me after you've unpacked. I'll be in the conservatory. All right, thank you. Alrighty. Very spooky. Spooky indeed. Huh? Hmm, a tripod. For a camera, maybe? Maybe. Let's can take a look at some of these things. They got, uh, constellations, I believe. Leo, Lynx. Pisces. I'm a Pisces. Um, so you guys be the judge of that. Oh my, not, <laughs> nice mom jeans there, Nancy. Alrighty. Wonder what goes there. Something fits in here, but what? I don't know. That's a good question. I don't think we have anything right now. Let's go out. Oh, Ethel, do I have to learn this? Yes, oh. I'm afraid you do. If I do well, can we play a game? Yes, but only in French. Oh. This is not a good time. Oh, okay. Never mind. Oh, forget it. Stay in Italy as long as you want, then. Some kind of husband you're proving to be. It's not all in my head. Don't bother. Oh, my. Okay. Linda? Hi, it's me, Nancy Drew. 
Nancy Drew, our friendly neighborhood detective. Well, welcome to Blackmore Manor. I apologize for greeting you under such unusual circumstances. Um... So, how are you feeling? How am I feeling? Well, I feel like... <laughs> I feel like something really strange is happening. Could you be more specific? Could I be more specific? Ah, the ace detective is grilling me for details. <sighs> I'm tired all the time, my mouth is dry, my vision is blurry. But that's not important. Here's what's important, Nancy. There are some doors that should never be opened. There are some doors that hold secrets which must never be known. That's everything you need to know. Now if... Mommy, can I come in? No. You're supposed to be in your lessons. Lessons are over. I want to meet Nancy. I said no, Jane. Okay... That was my stepdaughter. She can be such a pest sometimes. Anyway, I understand you feel an obligation to my mother, but trust me, there's nothing you can do. You're welcome to stay, but I strongly recommend that you go home as soon as possible. I can't go home empty-handed. It might jeopardize my ace detective status. Linda? Ooh. Okay, I'll let you rest. Got but the quiet I'll be treatment. Back. I'm here for you if you need me. Alrighty, so what's going on here? Looks like nothing much. I don't think we can look around this room that much. I always thought that this was like a door or something, but it's not. Oh. Well, can look at old photos. Uh, alrighty. Oh, oops. Go down. Oh, there goes my cell phone. Hello. Hi, Nancy. It's Mrs. Petrov. How is everything? Have you seen Linda yet? Yes, and I'm afraid she seemed really depressed. I'm just about at my wits end. I've never known her to act like this. The last doctor that examined her said that aside from a little dry skin, which is not unusual for her, she was perfectly fine. Why is she hiding behind that curtain? I have no idea. When I was out there last week, I got fed up and pulled the curtain back. She threw a fit, but otherwise she looked absolutely normal. A little pale, perhaps, but who wouldn't be pale cooped up like that? Something has changed her. Something in that house. Hugh is just as bewildered and upset by her behavior as I am. Please get to the bottom of this, Nancy. You're our last hope. Where is Hugh? He was called to Rome. As a diplomat, he's always being called out of the country without warning and without any say in the matter. He'd much rather be there with Linda, although... Although what? It's just that Hugh said it hasn't been very easy for him to talk to her lately. Whenever he calls, which is at least once a day, Linda always seems to fly off the handle for no reason, which doesn't make sense. Linda has always been extremely level-headed and even-tempered. She never gets angry. At least she didn't used to. Who exactly is Mrs. Drake? She's Hugh's aunt. She's taken care of Blackmore Manor ever since her brother died. He was Hugh's father. She's a bit of a character. I noticed. The way she spends all her time in that conservatory, slouching around, Trowel in hand, murmuring to herself. You'd think she was burying something. Or somebody. Dun, dun, dun. Goodbye, Mrs. Petrov. Goodbye, Nancy. Oh, one more thing. My niece is on call and her husband's out of town. And, and I told her I'd go over there and babysit if she had to work. So if you call and I don't answer, that's why. Bye. All right. That's pretty much it for that for right now now all right let's go to the library ah yes are you here from the agency it's about time agency oh dear you're not the typist from the spiffy specialty agency are you well how do you do i'm nigel mukherjee what a great name 
Pleased to meet you. My name's Nancy Drew. Are you visiting Blackmore Manor? I'm researching the Penvalent family, and Mrs. Drake has graciously opened the library for me. Nothing much has been written about the Penvalents until now. Sounds intriguing. It might have something to do with their scandalous history. Or perhaps it has something to do with the family treasure. Scandalous history? Well, having a family member burned as a witch can hardly be considered a mark of pride, I dare say. And then there's the whole business with the Blackmore Beast. Blackmore Beast? It's a story that's been told for generations out here. During the 1600s, many of the villagers reported seeing a strange beast with red eyes and giant fangs prowling the moors. They asked the mistress of Blackmore Manor, Eleanor Penvalin, to put a bounty on the beast's head. But, oddly enough, she not only refused, she forbade anyone from hunting the creature. It was rumored that the beast was Eleanor's husband, whom she had cursed for finding out too much about the Penvalin secret. When I was walking up to the house, I saw something with red eyes that called out to me. Really? How extraordinary. Are you sure it wasn't just jet lag? Positive, and I heard it make this kind of growling sound. Perhaps it was the cursed husband of Eleanor Penvalin prowling about the moors in search of lost yanks. <laughs> Who's Eleanor Penvalin? Eleanor Penvalin, tried and convicted of witchcraft in 1650, quite the height of the witch trials here in Essex. It was rumored that Cromwell arranged the conviction. Ooh, all right. Cromwell? Oliver Cromwell? Ironsides? <laughs> I suppose they don't teach history any longer in the U.S. Lady Penvalin was a rather vocal critic well, of Cromwell's policies and helped like he many of his important. enemies flee the country. Whether she actually was a practitioner of witchcraft is unknown, although many visitors to the manor during her tenure reported hearing strange, ghostly bells. Some even saw phantom hands floating about the manor, tolling their charmed chimes. Tell me about the Penvalin family treasure. For centuries, the Penvalins have been very secretive, some believe they're protectors of a fabulous treasure, or of some dark secret. I'll let you get back to your work. Tally-ho! Alrighty.